Welcome to Santa Rosa Surplus. I'm going to try this whole thing where I actually look at the camera and you can see me. I have uh, a grand total of 34 subscribers now. Ooh. So one of them asked a question. Armed Reptile was asking about the comparison between the VZ-50 and the P-64 as pocket guns. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about that for a moment. Everything on the table is cleared. Everything in my shoulder holster is cleared. Everything's good. You're safe. I'm not going to shoot you through the camera. This is a kel P-32. This is one of the pocket guns that I have carried in the past, and I'm thinking about switching back to it for reasons that I will get to in another video. This is about as small and light as it gets. The P-64 is slightly larger, significantly larger. However, let's go ahead and move to the current pocket gun that I've been carrying. That's the RM380. The RM380 is the same capacity, six rounds plus one. It is double action only. It does not have a decocker or a safety of any sort. So it's a pretty simple gun. The design, Remington kind of kind of messed with the design a little bit. This is a little bit bigger, but this is about as much bigger than this as the VZ-50 is bigger than the P-64. Uh, if you don't mind a little bit of muzzle overhang, this same pocket holster for the RM380 that I had made by Melissa just uh, works just fine. I did carry this some today just to be answer the question and in the pocket it's fine. It's a little bit heavier. Um, it is an all steel frame, no polymer, no aluminum. It is of course military quality. This is this is a Polish Radom made pistol and it's ridiculously beefy. Um, I mean, for all that it's really thin, it's very reliable and hard to kill. So, <clears throat> more of Melissa's holster work. We have the VZ-50, which is about <clears throat> a half an inch longer, a quarter inch taller, and feels slightly wider than the P-64, even though the dial calipers say that the slides are the same and the grip panels are actually the same width. I have a hard time believing the dial caliper because this lo looks and feels bulkier in the grips. Now that's actually a disadvantage for the P64 as the P64 is a little bit hard to hang on to until you practice with it. You are firing a round that is 10% more powerful, 10 to 15% more powerful than the stock 380 out of a very small short frame. Now, <clears throat> the bore axis on this is also lower and that's an ergonomic advantage. On the VZ50 pistol you have this odd frame design here and if you choke up for American style shooting you're going to end up here and you are going to bleed, okay? slide bite. This this has a very low frame with a very weird beaver tail, this frame rear end, and it's got a droopy butt. And you actually have to get way up here. So the bore axis on this is over a quarter inch higher than the P64, and the P64 you can choke up on just fine. It also has <coughs> um, some soft, nice angles to the rear of the slide, so it doesn't actually bite you <coughs> if you do run a little high. So this this actually runs a significantly lower bore axis, which is really good because this thing is hard to hold on to until you get used to it anyway. Um, <coughs> better pocket gun than the VZ-50. I really like shooting the VZ-50, and it's a fine holster gun, but it's not a good pocket gun. Pocket gun, fine. Um, I do carry this on the farm in a shoulder holster, as I've mentioned before, because they are dirt cheap and indestructible. So, <clears throat> take that for what it is. If you're going to carry in a holster uh, and you want to carry one of the currently available CNR Milserp type pistols, the CZ82 has twice the ammunition capacity in 9mm Macroff and is only very slightly larger than the P64. It's actually not any larger than... this is actually more compact than the uh, Macroff PM. So it is a little bit bigger. 
it is mostly wider in the grips. It's wider than it needs to be in the grips. They made some very hand-filling grips for it. Um, they're comfortable enough. People often have a problem with the ergonomics of the magazine release because it's buried way down in there, which is a good idea if you want to have a magazine when you, in the pistol when you need it. I don't have a problem with it because I just use this finger <coughs> and drop the magazine without changing my grip at all. And if you let go of the button before the magazine drops, the magazine stops. So you can run these pretty fast. That's pretty much all there is to it. I'm gonna go ahead and get into the other firearms later on. I will note that Vedder, V-E-D-D-E-R, makes Kydex IWB holsters for the P64 at this point. They don't make the holster model that I want them to, but that's okay. I don't usually carry inside the waistband. I will carry inside the belt if there's something special going on, but even if it's inside the belt, I don't go inside the waistband. That's just <clears throat> not something I do. Very good pocket pistol. Works really well. Goes very well with other compact firearms like your underfolder AK-47 because it's still concealable. Now, that's all I got for you. We're going to get into detail on some of the other stuff later, but I'm trying to keep these videos short and sweet. Have a good one, and let me run around here.